Hello? Hey, Coach, the Warriors weren't playing that well down the stretch. As you prepare for the series, what did you see on film that might be different from what you saw last year in the finals? I noticed that Steph wasn't there. <laughs> I watched real closely, and I just – I turned it off for a while, thought that maybe, you know, I didn't – and I turned it back on, and he still wasn't there. I noticed that. But after that, I didn't watch anything else. It was too scary. Morning, Greg. Nice to Hi. see you. Uh, Always good to be here. What, what did their kind of their center by committee present in terms of, of matchup issues? And you know David West pretty well. You, you know all of them pretty well, but um, right. you don't know who's going to be getting the bulk of the minutes, I guess. That's true. And since I can't control that, I don't think about it until I see who's out there and then try to figure it out. Pop, you had yes, you had a lot of experience over the years with veteran teams trying to either repeat or get back to the finals. How how did how did I don't know if boredom's the word, but as you went through seasons over and over again, how did your guys kind of deal with we're here again, we have to kind of ratchet it up and get ready for the playoffs and get ready for a long run? There's no uh, formula. I think it's just a, a matter of the uh, the professionalism of the players. You know, I think if, I don't, as you said, boredom is probably the wrong word, but there's probably a point during the regular season where uh, people might get a little stale. But come playoff time, there, there's, there's none of that. Pop, what did uh, Mike Brown mean to you when, you when he worked for your staff, and how have you kind of seen his journey evolve throughout his coaching stints? He uh, kept Steven Jackson from beating me up. Uh, <laughs> That was his main role. <laughs> Stevie, I love him. Uh, no, he, he's a you know, really creative uh, coach. He, he likes to think the game and uh, likes to think out of the box. Uh, he likes wine, and that was enough for me. Uh, he's, you know, he's just an enjoyable guy, but uh, he really understands the game. Uh, you know, he has a fantastic relationship with players and uh, just, you know, really, really a gifted guy. But if you have somebody like that, he's also fun to be around and you enjoy each other off the court, it makes, you know, existence even a whole lot better. So he, he meant a lot, obviously. Coach, uh, there are more than one time that Coach Kerr mentioned that he has learned so much from you. How does that feel like to have someone who has learned so much from you as your opponent? Well, um, I guess that's flattering, but he's probably learned less than what he said to you, so it makes him a really dishonest individual. <laughs> uh, but he's trying to be sweet and nice and all that. And intrinsically, he's not. He's a bad person. Uh, so... <laughs> Whatever his purpose. I don't know why I'm having so much fun here. Uh, he said. He also said you need to be humbled sometimes, and he hopes that uh, they really beat you. And okay, he see, now see he's you. being truthful. Okay. Uh, Greg, he, he talked about how he never played very many minutes for you in those seasons. Um, and did you sense that he, he learned from, from being on the bench? And also, does that give him more empathy for, for role players now as a, as a coach? Well, you know, let's not forget that he also played for Phil Jackson, and he learned a lot there too, I'm sure. But uh, Steve played important minutes for us. Uh, with, without him, one championship, whatever year that was, we don't win. He came in uh, against Dallas and won the game for us in a, in a playoff. I mean, literally, by, you know, making uh, shots uh, in that game or, or we don't advance. So... Uh, he, he, was, he was important, even though he didn't play as many minutes as a Tim Duncan or a Manu Ginobili. But uh, he's always been, uh, I mean, if you're intelligent, you don't lose it and then gain it or anything. He's a highly intelligent individual, and he, he was not the greatest athlete. And sometimes people who aren't the best athletes, you know, learn the game a little bit better because they've got to compensate. 
So if somebody tried to post him up, he knew uh, how to space uh, his body, how to not get uh, spun on. He knew how to front. He knew how to do his work early. Uh, he always knew who he was guarding or who he was being guarded by, and he would adjust. That's just an innate ability to understand the game and, and spatial relationships, people. So you, you knew early on that this would be something that you know he would be great at. So uh, his you know his uh, presence you know with his teammates, uh, his discussions with myself and the other coaches all the time, whether he's playing or not, uh, added value to our program. So. Uh, we got just as much information from him as he did us, very honestly. Pop, since you've last been here, I thought I'd follow up to see if you've been able to find any evidence of his son doing any collusion of any sort. Well, when we were uh, doing our preparation, uh, I think it was yesterday, before we got on the plane, we did some stuff in the film room and, you know, all that stuff to feel like you're coaching and preparing and everything, but... The guys are going to go play. You know, they'll play well or they won't. Uh, and Nick was in there, of course. So, but we took a vote, and I let the team vote on whether they wanted to stay in the room or not. Uh, <laughs> truly, we, we did. We took a vote. It was it was a mock vote, but uh, they all voted that he had to leave the room. Uh, but I, I overruled them and I let him stay because he's wonderful, and of course we trust him. Now, he did have dinner with his family last night, so we'll see. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. Enjoy the day. It's beautiful out there. <laughs>